Well, first of all, I want to welcome the mayor and uh, members of the council here today. Thank you very much for joining us. This is a, a huge opportunity for this community, Parsboro. And uh, it's been a long time coming, but every time we come here and make another announcement, we're getting that much closer to making this, this, this dream really become a reality. Uh, just standing in this very facility, we know that we're on the verge of greatness here in Parsboro. This tidal power project that we're here to talk about today, we know is really about the future. Earlier today, I was down at Ottawa House, which of course was the summer residence of Sir Charles Tucker, where many decisions were made which affected the future of this nation. We're doing some things down there, investing in the renovation uh, to make sure that we remember our past. But today, we're here to talk about our future and what will be a bright and prosperous future for this coast, for this bay, uh, for this community here in Parsboro. But really, it's a sign of the future for our entire nation as we move into more clean, green, natural, perpetual sources of energy, which will power our homes, our vehicles, and hopefully our entire economy moving into the future. That's what we're here to talk about today. So on behalf of the federal government, I'm really pleased to welcome Minister McKay here today. Of course, we all know Peter, he was here earlier. We talked about the an earlier stage of this project, which was the, the, the decision we made to support the funding of the laying the cables across the bay. Uh, Minister McKay was up here for that announcement. He's back again once uh, again to show the federal government support for the next stage of this particular project. Uh, Peter, of course, is, is uh, from our, our wonderful province. He's the regional minister here. And I can tell you, uh, as a member of parliament of Cumberland, Colchester, and the Muscadabin Valley, having a regional minister like Peter McKay is incredibly valuable to us all. Without Peter's support, we wouldn't have been able to fund things like the Advocate Harbor Seawall, the Fundy Geological Center, the money we were able to support the Ship's Company Theatre, and many, many other important projects which help build the local, rural economy of this community. So on behalf of all of us, I want to thank you, Minister McKay, for being here today, for your continued support of our riding, and your continued support of Parsboro. It's great to have you. And we all know, we've all heard the news that Peter has, of course, he's a little boy that just turned two, but he and Nazanin are expecting a little girl in September. So Peter, uh, uh, you're here to talk about an important step for the future of this community, the future of this province, and the future of this nation. But really, he's also here in celebration of a, a future addition to his family. So I know you all join me in welcoming Minister Peter McKay. Peter. <laughs> Thank you very much for those kind words, and I'll, I'll pass them on to Nazanin as well. It's uh, it's a real pleasure to be here with you, and you'll forgive me, one and all, if I take part in a little bit of mutual admiration for Scott as well. His uh, responsibilities as Parliamentary Secretary for not one, but two very busy federal portfolios uh, keep him moving around the country. He has a large rural constituency, as you know, much like my own in Central Nova. Witness that uh, seven kilometer ride. Down the, down the dirt road, I have a few roads like that in my constituency as well. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, folks here that have tremendous respect for the environment. And this time of year, as the snow is now starting to recede, we think about all those little birds and chipmunks and animals that are scratching through the snow to try to get at the ground. We've been doing that a little bit in our driveways around home. Um, I'm also, of course, very sympathetic for those Leaf fans who are uh, also uh, looking forward to the golf courses opening again. Uh, I saw a very courageous Leaf fan here, and I, I pass on a line that I heard the other day. There was a, a sign on the highway outside of Toronto that said, Highway 40, Leafs nothing. <laughs> so they are taking a bit of abuse these days. I'm, uh, I'm here, as Scott referenced, to, uh, to talk about a very forward-looking, a very exciting project that has been underway for some time. And uh, Scott has been a real champion for this and other projects in our province and uh, in this constituency, a few that he's referenced. Uh, he has been working very, very hard, uh, I can assure you, to uh, put forward the best interests of Cumberland, Colchester, Muscadabra Valley, but really this entire province. And um, nothing but uh, gratitude and admiration for my, my friend Scott. Um, I want to also acknowledge John Fleming, who's here as well, uh, Jeremy Post, uh, Marlene Moore, and many others who have been involved in this exciting project. Uh, je suis très heureux d'être ici avec uh, les personnes qui uh, présentent un projet comme ça 
un projet très excité au futur de notre pays et pour une annonce d'importants investissements qui seront source d'emploi et qui appuieront le développement des éco-technologies de Nouvelle-Écosse. This um, effort that we're talking about here today is about applying the ingenuity and the imagination of so many people uh, to bring about the type of responsible energy development that we know uh, is so key to the future of our province. But as Scott said as well, this has national implications. This is both a clear obligation and a compelling opportunity for our province and for the energy sector. Indeed, the market for clean energy worldwide is projected to double to $2.5 trillion by the year 2022. Imagine that, $2.5 trillion. This is an eye-watering figure when one considers the opportunity. And Canada, uh, as we know, is positioned to capture an enormous share of this global energy opportunity. In 2013, with a $6.5 billion new investment, Canada was the second fastest growing renewable energy market in the G20. That's a 45% increase in investment over the previous year. Today, Canada's clean technology industry is valued at over $11 billion, providing jobs for more than 41,000 people, and that's expected to grow to, over, uh, to double to 88,000 people by the year 2022. Canada possesses one of the cleanest electricity mixes in the entire world, with just under two-thirds of its electricity coming from renewable resources and the highest in the G7. This is, of course, in advance of what we know is one of the most exciting energy projects in a generation at Muskrat Falls, the Lower Churchill Falls project that's happening in Labrador, that of course will come right through our province via the, uh, the link that we'll have uh, in, uh, in Cape Breton. We also can boast the second fastest growing clean energy market in the G20 and Canada's per capita greenhouse gas emissions are now amongst the lowest in the world since they started tracking these emissions. All of this to say, uh, our government on behalf of Canadians understand the potential of this industry and the partnerships that this, uh, this energy opportunity creates. This is about diversifying our economy, it's about protecting our environment, and it is one of the most exciting and comprehensive projects that we have seen anywhere in the country. And what it all boils down to, of great interest to all, is jobs and our economy. Things that will keep people here and bring them back. We need to ensure that our best and our brightest entrepreneurs, our innovators, have the resources that they need to succeed and to leverage new opportunities. And one of the ways that we're doing that is through Economic Action Plan's investment in Sustainable Development Technology Canada, SDTC as it is known. Uh, it might mean something else to a medical doctor, but that's, uh, that's the meaning. Uh, in our Economic Action Plan 2013, the budget, the Government of Canada committed an additional $325 million over the next eight years to SDTC. This is about supporting the development and demonstration of clean technology like that project we're talking about today. There are two funds within this uh, project to help address climate change, air quality, clean air and soil, and renewal, renewable energy technologies, so the next generation of high-tech solutions for energy challenges. And many of the technologies supported by our government are already saving businesses real money, creating high-paying jobs, driving innovation and improving environmental performance and of course helping to create the climate for new investment opportunities, particularly in the manufacturing sector, which is something that our province sorely needs. But we're not stopping there. Last month, SDTC announced that the uh, technology and uh, SD natural gas funds have been reopened to new applications, opening the door for the next wave of clean tech entrepreneurs. More broadly, since 2006, when we formed government, We've invested over $10 billion to support clean energy infrastructure, energy efficiency, clean energy technologies, and the production of cleaner energy and cleaner fuels. And so all of these investments in total are saving Canadians serious money. They're enhancing our industry's ability to compete nationally and globally, and lowering our community's energy costs, which after a winter like this one, everyone is interested in hearing about. 
and ultimately creating a better quality of life right here in Nova Scotia. These efforts have not gone unnoticed. The International Energy Agency ranked Canada second in energy efficiency improvements among 15 countries between 1990 and 2010. And so today I'm pleased to announce over $8 million in new funding for clean energy projects right here in Nova Scotia. One of the defining landmarks in our province is, of course, and has been uh, since uh, our province was first discovered, is the Bay of Fundy. For years, scientists have dreamed of harvesting the incredible power of its tides to light our homes and power our businesses. And the tides, the highest in the world, are an awesome source of energy, ripe to be harvested and benefit for all. Today, Open Hydro Technology Canada is moving those dreams closer to reality. It will employ turbine technology at the Fundy Ocean Research Centre for Energy, otherwise known as FORCE, where we gather today to harvest the tide and move us closer to that reality. This will simulate the challenging conditions in the Bay of Fundy itself and demonstrate the viability of tidal turbines in that environment. Indeed, the Clean Energy Fund, Natural Resource Canada, has a well-established relationship with FORCE already. And the Green Power Labs is using high-resolution climate forecasting to increase the energy efficiency of commercial buildings. This will reduce greenhouse gas emissions and lower costs. Yeah. So with today's funding of $8 million, these creative Canadian companies can take their technology to the next stage of development, grow their business, and contribute to a cleaner, greener, more efficient Canada. Avec le fonds l'annonce aujourd'hui, ces entreprises canadiennes inventives pourront passer à la prochaine phase de développement de leur technologie. Elles pourraient croître et elles pourront contribuer à la qualité de l'environnement du Canada. Both of these are world-class cutting-edge projects that are pushing forward the frontiers of knowledge, leading to a world of cleaner air and a healthier environment. Let me close again by congratulating Open Hydro Technology Canada and Green Power Labs on their tremendous contributions to these efforts to harness energy and to bring a, a cleaner environment for all. Scott, um, I know I can speak for you and, and for the Government of Canada in congratulating all of those involved in this exciting project. Uh, we're proud to partner with you, proud to invest in your success and the success of our province to a greener energy potential being achieved. So thanks to the efforts of companies like yours, Canada is not only imagining a clean energy future, we are creating it right here in Parsborough. Thank you all so much.